In this video, I will show examples of mathematical statements that have two quantifiers, and I will explain why the order of these quantifiers matters. I'm going to concentrate on these two examples. The first one says for every integer x, there exists an integer y such that x is less than y. And the second one is pretty much the same, but I swap the order of these two parts. I say that there exists an integer y such that for every integer x, x is less than y. Even though the two look very similar, they're actually quite different. They mean something different. And in fact, one of them is true and the other one is false. I invite you to pause the video now and think about what these two statements mean, which one is true and which one is false. Okay, I'm going to start with statement number two. And I'm going to start with, uh, with, with the beginning. This statement starts with there exists an integer y. So we are saying there is an integer y for which all of this is true. Okay, I am saying that there is an integer y and for this fixed one integer y, y is greater than x for every x. In other words, I am saying that this is true for one y and for all x's. I am using the same y for different values of x. In fact, for all x's, I have to use the same y. That's because I led with there exists a y. On the other hand, in the first statement, I'm saying here that there exists a y such that this is true. And before all of that, I said for every x. So when I say for every x, there is a y, if I pick two different values of x's, it's okay to pick two different values of y. For one x, one y. For a different x, a different y. So the first statement means that we can use different y's for different x's. We don't have to. Maybe we can find one y that works for all the x's, but it's okay to find different y's that work for different x's. Once we put it this way, we can now interpret what these two statements mean and write them in English. Okay. In the first statement I say for every x, there is a y that is greater, and different values of x allow me to choose different values of y. In other words, in English, what this means is that every integer is smaller than some other one. Every integer x is smaller than some other integer y. And this is certainly true. Every integer x is smaller than another one. But in the second case, we are saying that there is an integer y that is greater than all the integers, all of them at once. So the way to write the second statement in English is that there is an integer which is greater than all the integers. And when I put it this way, it's easier to see that it's false. There is no such a thing as the largest integer, one that is greater than all of them. Okay, so this is the difference between the two statements, and this is why the order matters. When I say for every x there exists a y, I can choose different y's for different x's. When I say there exists a y for every x, then the same y must work for all the x's. We know this is true and we know this is false, since they're mathematical statements, we also should be able to write formal proofs for them. So let's do that. Uh, here's the first statement. I wrote it as a theorem. Let's see what a formal proof could look like in this case. Okay. I want to write a proof of this. This leads by saying for every integer x, this is true. So I must check that this is true for every integer x. Since there are infinitely many values of x, I cannot check them all one by one, so I'm going to have to check them all at once. So I'm going to write my proof, as I'm going to lead my proof by saying, let x be an integer. And when I do this, it means that I'm not choosing x. x can be anything, and I'm going to write a proof that works for all the x's at once. Now, once I have this value of x, I need to show what is the one value of y that works for that. I only need one value of y. Since I only need one, I get to choose it, and I have to provide it. 
So one way to do this is I'm going to say take y as x plus 1. And now that I have chosen y, I need to verify that this is true. So finally, to conclude, I'm going to verify that x is actually less than x plus 1. And yeah, this is true. I don't need to check anything else. And that completes the proof. So that is how we would prove the first statement, the one that was true. To finish, let's have a look at the second statement and see how we would prove that it is false. Here is the claim. The second statement is false. To prove that this is false, we could do a proof by contradiction. That would work fine. But instead, I'm going to use the same technique I did in the proof I did in the video Easy Proofs with Quantifiers. To prove that this is false, I'm going to write the opposite. I'm going to write the negation, and I'm going to prove that the negation is true instead. Okay. So what does it mean that this whole thing is false? This whole thing starts with there exists a y. So it is false that there exists a y with this property. Saying that it is false there exists a y with this property is the same thing as saying that for every y, this property is not true. It's the same thing as saying that for every y, this property is not true. Okay, And what I'm saying here is that the first statement is equivalent to the second statement. All right. Now, let's look at this part here. I'm saying it is false that for every x, this. It is false that for every x, this. That's the same thing as saying that there is at least one x for which this is false. All right, let's write that down. And now I will copy the same thing I had before. OK. So basically, what I've done here is write the negation of this statement. Saying that this is false is the same thing as saying that this is true. So if I want to prove that this is false, all I need to prove is that this is true. And once I put it in those terms, actually, this statement looks very similar to the one we already proved is true. So the proof is going to look very similar to it as well. We know how to do it. So I'm going to leave doing this proof as an exercise.